So what we're going to do here is high level overview of all 17 sections. Last Sunday, I wrapped up my January to April live training session. And we actually went through every single section in one session, rating it easy, difficult, things to look out for, and things to basically um, low hanging fruits that you can capitalize on in each and every one of those sessions. Sections. Right now, I'm going to be dividing this into like three to four blocks and giving you a big picture view of things. Okay. So the big five, you've heard me say this, those of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, you've probably heard me say this on YouTube during the on-demand content. I call this big five, I've sort of uh, stolen this term from, you know, the big four auto manufacturers, uh, the big three accounting firms, you know, the big three tennis players. So you guys know like the big three, big four, big five concept in, you know, in different contexts and in different industry. When we are dealing with FE Electrical, the big five really account for, uh, they include math circuits, electronics, power, and digital systems, right? Now, depending on your strengths and weaknesses, you might you may find some of the, them easy, some of them medium, some of them more difficult. The fact remains that these big five topics, okay, just the five out of 17 topics account for 50% of the exam weightage. Now, when students enroll in my program and they say, we've seen that I previously failed the exam, or, you know, this is my multiple, I'm in a multiple attempt scenario, or even if they go through my program, you know, and if they are not successful, which is very rare, nine out of 10 times, guys, what happens if somebody has gone through my program and has not failed, has failed the exam, nine out of 10 times, the reason is that they only completed the on-demand course, only 50%, 60%, 70%. They were cutting the corners, not utilizing it effectively. But anyways, essentially, so any diagnostics that I see, a failed attempt, I can almost guarantee you every time the big five performance is going to be below average. Okay. So the big five is crucial. All right. So it does not. And then some of the students, the approach that they take is that they think that all they need to do is big five which is again wrong, right? Big five accounts for 50% of exam weightage, but you can also, you know, experience death by a thousand cuts, all right? Experiencing deaths by a death by a thousand cuts basically means that the remaining 12 sections are going to come and bite you, right? You were able to escape that fatal blow, you know, that knockout punch that these big fives can deliver. But then, you can experience death by a thousand cuts if you are complacent about the remaining 12 sections. So this is a big picture view, right? So we need to be really careful about big five, especially power, electronics, and circuits, okay? Because in some way, shape, or form, these three sections are going to make an appearance in P power. I know most of you guys are itching to basically get done with FE electrical and then move on to P power, especially if you have experience in the field, because FE is just a stepping stone for you, right? You are being forced to do this signal processing, communications, controls, software, all of that stuff, which you probably don't even use in your day-to-day -day life if you're a power systems engineer, right? So these three topics within Big Five are crucial, all right? So moving on, we have, I used to call it first four, sorry, first five, I call it now first because math is already taken care of, but essentially the first five topics, math, probability, stats, ethics, engineering, economics, and properties of electrical materials, generally speaking, everything else being equal, they are a little bit easy topic. They're on the easier side of things. There are some nuances, right? Engineering comics has some nuances, annuity and gradient. Probability has Bayes theorem, normal distribution binomial. Properties of electrical materials can get a little bit tricky depending on how you look at it. But overall, when you compare it to the core electrical and computer engineering sections, they tend to be a little bit easy. You guys agree? Any comments on what we've discussed so far? These two blocks, sub blocks. So far, so good, guys. So what is our goal? Our goal in the first five is to capitalize on it. Two reasons, two reasons, okay? One is obviously we want to capitalize wherever we can. The second reason is that imagine yourself and those of you who are in a repeat situation, you can review it, probably agree with me, that you walk into the exam, the first five questions, right? If you get those first five questions, it's going to boost your confidence like no tomorrow, right? Yeah, but... If you are not able to make a head or tail out of the first five questions, even if the remaining 105 questions are going to be easy, it just puts you in a very defensive mindset, okay? Shakes your confidence, you lose your composure, you start sweating, and you, you basically think that today is not your day. Can somebody relate to that? Does it make sense? So psychologically, it is very crucial that, you know, the first few questions that we're going to see on the exam, 
which are essentially going to be from math, probability, ethics, engineering, economics, probability of electrical material, we capitalize on them. And they tend to be more on the easier side of things. Now, you don't have to be that rigid in your approach, okay? Don't walk preemptively thinking that um, if I am able to solve first five topics, then only I'm going to pass the exam, right? Chances, they can twist and turn things, okay, guys? They can make the seemingly easy sections more difficult and then compensate for the stuff that they've made difficult by making the stuff sections that tend to be more difficult easier. So you gotta be very flexible. You gotta be very flexible, but generally speaking, all else being equal, the nature of these first five topics is on the easier side of things, okay? Then we have the dreadful, you know, intimidating, scary computer topics, especially if you skipped computers, computer networks, computer systems, software, even digital systems in your undergraduate studies, this is going to be your Achilles heel. Okay. Has anybody seen the movie Troy? Brad Pitt, Troy? It's at least 10 years old, right? Yeah. So remember the concept of Achilles heel? He was Achilles, right? His heel was the only vulnerable part of his body. Okay. Otherwise he was undefeatable, right? So for a lot of students, this is the Achilles heel even if you go in with 110% preparation, because essentially what you're expected is to go through computer network system and software. We gotta be a little bit careful here. We are not gonna turn our FE electrical exam preparation into crash courses on computer networks, computer systems and software, but at the same time, we cannot skip it altogether. So there are two extremes. Some students skip it altogether. Some students just get so absorbed in it. What I would recommend you, if you have access to an on-demand course, what we need to do is essentially try and follow the on-demand coursework for all these three sections. I know I have gone a little bit deeper into computer networks, right? And we can take a little bit more selective approach in computer networks. But the point is that if you cover at least these three sections, how I've covered in the on-demand course, then your chances of passing the exam or at least doing well on these sections is gonna be higher. You're investing your time effort and money in it. So might as well utilize the content that is there for you, right? You're not expected to sort of become overnight expert in computer networks or a software engineer or, or a computer systems engineer, but make use of it and don't bomb it. Okay. Selective, selectively work on the easier topics and the more probable likely topics, but don't bomb it. Right. And the last one is miscellaneous. Uh, lately, I found that during live training, when I work through, you know, section by section with students, I'm able to get feedback from students. What are their pain points and this and that. So what I've noticed by doing a bunch of live training sessions is that these miscellaneous topics can be really irritating for a lot of students, right? Linear system, signal processing, in fact, electromagnetics controls and communications. So within them, you have communication, signal processing, and linear systems, which are super math heavy. Okay, throw in maybe electromagnetics in there as well. So what I like to uh, tell my students is that the level of difficulty of math in the mathematics section is not as difficult. It's not as challenging as some of the math that you encounter in linear systems, control systems, and communication. Okay, that makes these pro uh, sections more math intensive as compared to math itself. Okay, so we get a and signal processing as well. We have to be cognizant of uh, this fact and make sure that we approach these sections with an electrical slant to them, but also realize that there is a ton of math, okay, in them. So the transform, Z transform, Fourier transform, Laplace transform appear, which are purely math, okay, they're mathematical concepts. Then you have tons of trigonometry, you have tons of uh, sometimes integrals as well. Convolution, for example, has a lot of integrals. Electromagnetics has a weird type of math, which is basically vector calculus, you know, the, um, the, the curl operators and the uh, divergence operators and, and, uh, and all of that. So that can be a little bit tricky. So look at these sections, I would say about 50% math, right? And about 50% electrical theory. And again, damage control. Guys, don't bomb anything. If you bomb any of the sections on the exam, it's not that you're going to fail guaranteed. Uh, if your performance, you know, picks up the slack in the remaining sections, but you're going to be doing yourself a huge disfavor. And a lot of times what I see, two reasons why students bomb a section. One, because they completely skipped it when they were in the exam prep mode. Don't completely skip anything. Okay, you have a resource, the on-demand program that you're using. Utilize it effectively, 
Okay, don't skip anything completely. You know, magically things are not going to reveal themselves on the day of exam or the handbook is not going to come to your rescue. So don't skip it. That's how you bomb a section, complete section. Number two, poor time management. And typically I see that in computer systems and software. By the time students are reaching systems and software, they're randomly selecting because they didn't leave themselves extra 10 minutes to answer three, four questions. Okay, these are the two main reasons why students bomb a complete section. So please don't do that. Time management, and we can talk more about that. Please remind me about time management if I forget. I'm sure that there will be questions about time management, but if I forget, please remind me. I have a couple of things to share about that, but we'll deal with that at the end. So this is a holistic view of 17 sections. And when I go through my live training, I handhold my students section by section, topic by topic, explaining them the concepts and telling them about the pitfalls. We keep this broad picture in mind when we're preparing for it. And this is not to provide you any shortcuts, okay? It's not to say that 50% focus on the 50% weight and the 20% weight and the 20% weight, forget about the 10%, right? Or focus on the stuff that is easy and then easy and then forget about the hard. That is you reading into what I'm sharing. This is a complete picture. Skipping anything on the FE exam is a very, very risky proposition. Don't do that. Keep this in mind. So when you're progressing through your preparation, you have an idea of what you're dealing with in terms of the weightage, in terms of level of difficulty, relative level of difficulty, right? If you're a computer systems engineer, then obviously you're going to find computer system section to be a walk in the park. If you're a networks engineer, you're going to find that a walk in the park. If you're a software engineer, you're going to be laughing throughout the 10, 15 lectures that you're going to be doing software. But if you're a power systems engineer, you might be struggling like other 95% of the power systems engineer. So this is just to put things out there for you so that you don't feel that you're, you're the only one who's going through this painful process. Okay, any questions guys about this before we dive into uh, the technical discussion? 